Quite often, the old adage fact is stranger than fiction isn't all that truthful. We humans have a knack for creating bizarre and wondrous tales that excite our curiosity far beyond anything in the natural world. However, what if I were to tell you there lived a gentleman not so long ago that was far more outlandish than anything our simple minds can conjure up? A man who exuded enthusiasm and riled up an entire nation. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the story of the vegetarian weightlifter who started his own religion, Bernard McFadden. Bernard Adolphus McFadden was born on August 16, 1868 in Mill Springs, Missouri. Not unlike so many others, his formative years were fraught with hardships. By age 11, he had already lost his mother and father, and was subsequently placed in an orphanage. Following this, he began to work on a farm as a bound boy. Here he experienced his first true taste of hard exercise and proper nutrition. Once his two-year stint at the farm had ended, he reverted back to old habits and fell into his worst physical state yet. It wasn't until his later teenage years that McFadden began training once again, this time with weights. It was also around this time that he became a raw vegetarian, a diet he advocated until his death. By 1887, McFadden had declared himself a teacher of physical culture, making him one of the pioneers of personal training. With this new moniker came a new name, Bernard McFadden. His justification for the name came from the fact that Bernard sounded similar to the roar of a lion, and McFadden was more masculine than McFadden. By 1910, McFadden had constructed a literal publishing empire. By this point, he had already authored 18 books and founded Physical Culture magazine. Many of his writings actually went far beyond fitness. During the 1920s, McFadden began experimenting with pulp magazines. Pulp magazines, for those that do not know, were inexpensive imaginative stories published between 1890 and 1950 that tackled a variety of fictional themes. Some of the stories McFadden published included red-blooded stories, flying stories, and tales of danger and daring. By 1935, McFadden publications came to include Liberty, True Detective, True Story, True Romance, Dream World, Ghost Stories, Sport, and many more. In my opinion, it is fair to say Bernard McFadden is the most authored physical culturist to ever live. At the height of his success, he amassed a combined readership of 7.3 million Americans in total. Rather unsurprisingly, McFadden wasn't without controversy. Unlike his contemporaries, McFadden condoned non-procreative intercourse. Additionally, Physical Culture Magazine's obsession with publishing scantily clad imagery gained the attention of activist Anthony Comstock. While McFadden won the majority of his court cases surrounding adult themes, a 1907 article which published The Danger of Syphilis cost him $2,000 in legal fines and nearly landed him in jail. Luckily, he was pardoned by President William Howard Taft. Have you ever wondered what makes someone superior to another person? According to McFadden, that would be their ability to fast for an extended period of time. McFadden regarded fasting as the ultimate test of willpower and boasted the claim that it could cure you of almost any ailment. To demonstrate the efficacy of fasting, McFadden would routinely photograph himself lifting heavy weights after the completion of an extended fast. As mentioned earlier, McFadden pushed a raw vegetarian diet. He advocated against the use of drugs and alcohol, and proudly campaigned against the consumption of white bread. In addition, he abstained from any scientifically backed medicine. McFadden also launched his own brand of cereal, named Strength Food, in an attempt to directly compete with Kellogg's. Unsurprisingly, it was a colossal failure. Perhaps his most interesting claim was about the type of holistic medicine known as grape theory. This diet involved eating all parts of the grape plant in a set ratio which, in turn, is supposed to help cure the body of even the most severe diseases and conditions, one of which being cancer. Needless to say, this diet has been universally panned 
and labeled quackery by the larger scientific community. Eventually growing unsatisfied with publishing, McFadden began to expand his empire into uncharted territory, quite literally actually. Soon he began creating healthatoriums throughout the American Midwest, which offered an education in physical training. He also attempted to found a physical culture city in New Jersey, which folded after just a few short years. McFadden also came to own numerous hotels and restaurants in New York by 1900. He also founded the McFadden Boarding School in 1936 for young children, which eventually morphed into a pre-military training school for young men during the Second World War. Of the various quirks of McFadden, the one that most intrigues me is the religion he founded, called Cosmotarianism. In this, he blended the teachings of the Bible with physical culture. He claimed that only those who took the best care of their bodies in the mortal world would be granted eternal life in heaven. Although McFadden is often remembered for his lewd material, he also worked with notable names such as Winston Churchill, Eleanor Roosevelt, Margaret Sanger, Mahatma Gandhi, and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. In fact, it was his fabricated physical examination of FDR in Liberty Magazine that encouraged the general public to support the then governor of New York as president. His ongoing friendship with President FDR was highly publicized and is very well documented. McFadden was instrumental in getting FDR to create a cabinet-level Secretary of Health position, a position he himself wanted to hold, but failed to ever get the appointment. Even still, he never gave up on his dream of being a politician. Throughout his life, he ran for mayor of New York, U.S. Senator, and even President of the United States. Now we must discuss the rather unflattering side of McFadden's life, which, I must warn you, is not for the faint of heart. As is well documented, he enjoyed the company of women. In total, McFadden was married four times and had serial mistresses whom he slept with during each of the marriages. Additionally, he had a seemingly endless number of children. McFadden had seven kids with his third wife alone, whom he chose to marry after running a competition to determine the most perfect specimen of English womanhood. McFadden would experiment with different diet and exercise routines on his children, and even use them as props in traveling expeditions. His feelings on the youth were widely publicized, whereby he felt strongly against what he described as weak children. In fact, when his own daughter died of a treatable heart condition, he remarked that, It's better she's gone. She only would have disgraced me. Another story goes that, when one of his infant sons started having violent convulsions, his then-wife begged him to call a doctor. He refused, plunging the baby into a hot bath. Of everything, this is perhaps the most critiqued aspect of his entire life. Not unlike his competitor Kellogg, his statements and actions towards children cross bounds into pure evil. Even long into his twilight years, McFadden continued to perform various stunts to demonstrate his vitality and youthful exuberance. For example, he celebrated his 81st birthday by parachuting out of a moving airplane while wearing one of his old business suits. McFadden long claimed that he would live well over 100 years due to his strict diet and lifestyle choices, and even claimed that 150 years old was possible. This, of course, never came to fruition, and he died alone in a New Jersey hotel in 1955 at the age of 87. Bernard McFadden was undoubtedly one of the most important pioneers in physical culture, especially here in the States. Without him, bodybuilding and weight training as we know it would simply not exist. He lived a fascinating life his way, which, in many respects, culminated in his downfall. McFadden is largely forgotten in the public eye, which can be argued is a good thing. However, history tends to repeat itself if we do not acknowledge it. Learning from men like McFadden is important, so we as a collective don't fall for the same marketing tricks all over again. Remember, fads come and go. Live your life by you, for you. If you do that, you are certain to be a more happy and healthy person.
I hope you all enjoyed the first of many documentary style videos on this channel. Now tell me, who would you like to see next? Drop a comment below telling me your recommendation. And until next time, this is Forgotten Fitness, signing out. Bye bye.